Final Fantasy XIV starts with your character arriving in one of Eorzea's three city-states of Gridania, Limsa or Uldar. Depending on where you start, your journey will be different but they all lead you to the same point, where you find out that you're a warrior of light, one of Hydaelyn's chosen ones. After this, you're recruited to join the Scions of the Seventh Dawn at the Waking Sands, a group that is dedicated to protecting Eorzea against all threats, which include godlike beings called Primals and the Garlean Empire. In your first conversation with this group, you learn that the visions you've been getting are called the Echo, a power that Hydaelyn has given you and that the leader of the Scions, Menphilia, has the Echo as well. The Echo allows you to see other people's past and after getting this information, you join the Scions. Finally being introduced to your comrades, Yida, Papalimo, Thancred, Yastola, and Yorianje, and last but not least, the bookkeeper of the Scions, Tataru. After this, you team up with Thancred to stop the Amalja that are trying to to summon Ifrit, but unfortunately you're too late. But through this encounter with Ifrit, you find out that you can't be tempered, which is a fancy way of saying mind controlled due to Hydaelyn's blessing. So you fight Ifrit and you win, but you have no time to rest because the grand companies of Eorzea want you to join one of them. So you go to the three city states listening to their leaders' speeches to see which one you want to join. But at each speech, you meet a pair of twins named Alphanote and Alize who seem to have issues with all three nations seeking to help Eorzea in their own ways. After this, you choose your grand company and are sent on another mission. This time, you help Papalimo and Yida oversee the Twelve's Woods to approach the Sylphs diplomatically to stop the threat of summoning Remote. And everything seems to be going well with the Sylphs until we get the news that their leader, Frixio, is stuck within the Thousand Miles of Toto Rock. As you look for him, you encounter a man in a dark cloak and red mask named La Habrea who sends a monster to attack you. After that, you find find Frixio and with that it seems like peace between the Sylphs and Gridania is guaranteed. So with that being wrapped up you head back to the Waking Sands where you mention La Habrea to Menphilia and she calls him an Asian, but they don't have time to discuss that. Unfortunately Limsa Lominsa is asking for help with the Kobolds because they're trying to summon their Lord Titan. So you and Yastola head off to deal with that threat. After defeating Titan you arrive at the Waking Sands after Livia sends Junus and her Garlean soldiers have killed and kidnapped most of your companions. After receiving the message of Norixia, you go to the church of Damata Lenmata. This is where you meet Alphanote properly and he has a plan to restore the Scions. But first, we have to defeat Garuda, one of the most savage primals that we know of. So Alphanote recruits Sid Garlin, the greatest engineer currently alive, and his airship so we head to Corphus to find the airship and help people there like Lord Hashifan. After defeating Garuda, Gaius Van Ver Belzar arrives and uses the ultimate weapon to defeat and absorb the primals Ifrit, Titan, and Garuda. After your failure against Garuda, you turn your attention to saving the remaining Scions, but just before you can escape, you get cornered on a cliff where you get saved by Yida Yastola and Sid's amazing flying. After this, Lahabre revealed that he is working with the Garleans and that he's taking over Dankwit's body because the Asians are beings of pure Aether, meaning that they can change their vessels at will. After this, the nation of Gridania, Uldar, and Limsa Lomenta, with the help of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, declare war on the Garlean Empire, meaning that the Eorzean Alliance is back in action. They began their offensive by taking out Ritahin Sans Arena to slow down the garrison. Then you defeat Livia San Junis because she is blocking the way towards the Praetorium, which is where Belsar is. After getting in, you face Nero, but he escapes, leaving Belsar alone. After defeating Belsar for the second time, La Habrea forces the ultimate weapon weapon to use Ultima, destroying the Praetorium, leaving you and Belsar alone for your final confrontation. After this, you finally conquer Belsar and destroy the ultimate weapon, but La Habrea can't accept that, so he tries to fight you himself, but with the help of Hydaelyn, you exercise La Habrea from Thancred's body and escape Praetorium before it blows up. After this, the Eorzean Alliance celebrates in honor of their victory, but you are interrupted by the awakening of a new primal. But before you confront this primal you help Sid at the excavation site of the Crystal Tower, where you make a new friend named Grahatia, and Nero reappears. They eventually discover that the tower and everything within it is ancient Allegan technology, meaning that it's far more advanced than current technology. But as they explore the tower, they unleash Zandi, a former Allegan king, and the Cloud of Darkness, an extremely powerful being that wants to consume all of the light within the world and reduce it to nothing due to a covenant 
that she made with the former Allegan King Zandi. So you defeat the Cloud of Darkness, but we still have to seal away the tower due to the technology being far too advanced for current times. And this is where they discovered that Grahatia is a descendant of Zandi, and that means that he can't control the tower. So after some time to himself, Grahatia decides to seal away the tower with himself inside, putting himself in stasis, hoping that one day when the doors open once again, that the Crystal Tower's technology can be understood and used for good. And with that, you say goodbye to Grahatia. So you return to the Scions where they are considering moving their headquarters to a more neutral location. But Menphilia is hesitant due to some personal matters. So you and Alphanode help Menphilia with this personal matter and they make plans to move to Revenant's Toll, calling their new home the Rising Stones. But soon after, a primal is summoned in Gridania, King Margul Marg the Twelfth, leading to the revelation that historical figures or concepts that are prayed to or revealed enough can be summoned like normal primals, and Asians are teaching people how to do this. But King Marg isn't a match for you and you take him down easily. So you go back to the Waking Sands to report to Mephilia just after she's been attacked by an Asian in a white robe. So you follow him, finding out that his name is Elidibus, but you put that aside for right now because everyone goes to the Rising Stones for the first time, and just when the Scions are getting settled, they have a group of Domen refugees who need their help. They're led by a woman named Yugiri. So after getting acquainted with them, Alphanote sets up a meeting so she can plead her case to the Sultana and the Syndicate, which doesn't go so well. So the Scions decide to help them for the time being by getting them jobs in Revenant's Toll. But our heroes get no rest because the Sahagin are trying to summon Leviathan. So the Scions plus Yugiri go to Limsa Lominsa, and while there were some struggles, the Scions found a way to defeat the Sea Serpent, and Melvib promises to send supplies to aid the Domen refugees for Yugiri's help in settling the matter and teaching the people of Limsa Lominsa her martial arts. Then the Scions find out that Teleji Adeleji, who was a part of the Syndicate, is trying to take over the Cartanu Flats so he can get Omega, an elegant weapon that is stronger than the ultimate weapon. But before you can tackle this threat head on, you go to Gridania to slay Ramut in a test of strength and he deems you worthy, so the crisis is averted. After this you go back to the Rising Stones because Yurianje believes that he has found a way to destroy the Asians permanently, which involves trapping them in an ethereal prison and destroying the prison with a massive amount of Aether. But unfortunately they don't have anything that can trap the Asians so he does more research. After this, Alpha Note, inspired by you and the Scions, begins to make his own grand company for the continent of Eorzea. So you go around Eorzea recruiting people that you've met on your journey and some brand new faces as well, while Alpha Note deals with the politics of funding by dealing with the Syndicate. But Nanamo the Sultana is worried about the Syndicate using this new grand company as their personal army, but Raban trusts the Scions to oversee this conflict properly. Next you head to Camp Dragonhead in Corphus to help Hashifan deal with the heretics led by Lady Iceheart, but unfortunately we can't find her so Hashifan hands off the investigation to the Order of Holy Knights who are the military force of the most northern nation in Eorzea, Ishgard. So we go back to the Rising Stones to see Alphanode's inaugural speech to his grand company the Crystal Braves. So after this you assist the captain of the Crystal Braves, Ilbert, with a couple of jobs, which leads you and Alpha Node back to Corpus so you can meet with the leader of the Temple Knights, Sir Emmerich. Unfortunately, Alpha Node can't convince them to join the Eorzean Alliance, but Emmerich promises to make sure that Camp Dragonhead can continue to send supplies to the Scions if the Scions check on the Keeper of the Lake's recent activity, so they agree. But just as the meeting concludes, the heretics attack another caravan, so we go after them because it seems like they're trying to summon in Saint Shiva. And this is where you meet Lady Iceheart, who tells you that her real name is Yaselle, who says that she simply wants to end the war between the dragons and Ishgard. Then she uses an Aetherite to leave. 
So we wrap things up in Camp Dragonhead by finding the people who told the heretics about the caravan and then we make our way to Gridania for an emergency meeting with the Eorzean Alliance because Garlemald has a new emperor, Varus Sauce Galvis, the grandson of the former emperor. So for the time being, the alliance will forget about Cartanu with Telegi at Alegi for now to deal with this threat, so they prepare for war. After this meeting, you head back to Revenant's Toll to meet Monbrita, Yuriande's childhood friend. She's going to help the Scions figure out how to capture the Asians so they can destroy them. She starts by helping the Scions track down Yasel, and you find her just as she transforms into Shiva. After a tough battle, Yasel escapes to fight another day, calling you a fool and asking you to think about why you fight, revealing that she has the Echo as well. But after this encounter, you head to the Rising Stones where Mombrita has made a breakthrough in capturing the Asians. She believes that White Orsite can be a prison for the Asians, but only for a short time, meaning that when the Scions trap an Asian, that they have to kill them quickly and have a massive amount of aether to do it. So everyone goes to do their research. Meanwhile, Ilbert, Alphanod, and Raban discuss the betrayal of Raban's second in command, finding out that she was a triple agent for Raban, Varus, and the Monitorist, the political faction that opposes the Sultana. Later, Nanamo confides that she wants to make Uldar a republic, meaning that she would give up her crown, surprising Melvib and Khan Isiena. Surprising Melvib and and Khan Sienna, and she asks them to help with Bond in the chaos that will come afterwards. But moving back to our character, Ishgar requests that we check on Midgar Psalm because the Dragon Star is shining brightly, meaning that the Keeper of the Lake is roaring and may wake up soon. And you go to check on his corpse, and he's awake, so you fight him. But after this battle, he takes away Hydaelyn's blessing, meaning that you've lost access to the Echo and your resistance from tempering. He is also interested in you, so he decides to travel with you to see what path you'll take and to see if you're worthy of Hydaelyn's blessing. So going back to the Rising Stones, you help Mumbrita create a weapon capable of destroying the Asians by getting a corrupted crystal. But while you gather them, you're attacked by an Asian who tells you that he's going to take Tupsamadi, a staff that holds a ridiculous amount of aether. So you and Mumbrita head back to the Rising Stones, but the Asian kidnaps Mephilia, jumping into a dimensional rift and Mumbrita Breda is severely injured, so you go after the Asian to get Menphilia and the staff, and after defeating the Asian, you trap him within the White Orosite. But Tupsimadi and Mumbrita's weapon don't have enough energy to take him down, so Mumbrita sacrifices herself to give them the push that they need. And with that, an Asian is defeated and a comrade is lost. Everyone grieves, especially Yorianje, but life must go on. So Ishgard requests the help of the Scions and the Crystal Bra Braves in defending the city against the dragons. Leading up to the battle, you have a meeting with Emmerich and you meet Estinian, who is the Azure Dragoon, who usually holds the Eye of Nidhogg, which makes him extremely powerful, but is locked in a vault due to the severity of the attack, and they can't let Nidhogg get back to full power. So you and the Crystal Braves help Ishgard repel the dragons. After this, the Scions are invited to a celebration in Uldal in honor of Ishgard's victory, hoping that this could lead towards a united Eorzea. You arrive at the banquet, getting a glimpse of what Eorzea could be. Then you have a private conversation with Nanamo, and she asks you to support her decision to make Uldar a republic, and you promise to. So with that, she takes a sip of her wine, but it is poisoned, and you're framed for it. While Alpha Node has been betrayed by the Crystal Braves, you're dragged to the ballroom where Teleji at Alegi tries to convince everyone that you've poisoned a Sultana. But but fortunately, nobody believes this. Also, he reveals that some of the other monetarists have been using the Crystal Braves as their personal army. So at this point, Teleji makes Raban so mad that he cuts him in half and then goes after Lolorito, but gets his arm cut off by Ilbert, where he reveals that he's been working for the Monitorist the whole time so that he can help Alamigo. At this point, all chaos has broken loose, so Khan Sienna and Melvib leave because there's nothing that they can do. After this, Raban frees you and tells you to clear the Scion's name, so Raban fights alone. At this point, the Scions have to fight their way out of the city. Unfortunately, you're the only one to make it out, with the others staying behind. 
Right. Until we see Alpha Node being escorted by Raban's adopted son, Pippin, he helps you and Alpha Node meet up with Sid, and then he flies you to the Camp Dragonhead. So Hashafant welcomes you until he can secure your asylum in Ishgard. So we go to meet our comrades that escaped, Tatru and Yugiri. Yugiri stays so she can keep an eye on the situation and help clear the names of the Scions, while Tatru stays with you and Alpha Node waiting for asylum. Heaven Sword starts with you, Alpha Node, and Tatru entering Ishgard as wards of House for Temps. Then we meet the person housing them, Count Edmont, and his sons Artorio and Emilian. After these introductions, you help Count Edmont's sons with their duties to start repaying him for his hospitality. So you start with Artorio in the Corpus Western Highlands. You two get wrapped up in a mystery that leads you to your cell. But she is surprised that Midgar Psalm is traveling with you and explains that all she wants to do is bring peace between Ishgard and the dragons, so you let her leave. After this, you head towards the Sea of Clouds to help Emilian. As you do your duties, you get into a confrontation with Devanu, saving Emilian, but you end up retreating when they summon a primal, Bismarck. So considering the size of the beast, you retreat, but you are cornered with Hashifant and Emilian at your side. But Sid saves the day with his airship and you get back to Ishgard in one piece. Upon returning, Edmond tells you that your actions have earned his house a lot of honor, but before you can celebrate, Alpha Node and Tartru have been detained on suspicion of heresy, but you save them by having a trial by combat proving your innocence. After this, Archbishop Thorden VII wants to meet you and apologize in person, but Thorden also explains that he's met the Asians and is trying to gain their trust to figure out what they want. He asks for your help when the time is right and you agree. After that, you go back to Lord Edmont's house to discuss things with Alpha Node, but Tatru interrupts, informing us that Raban is going to be executed. So you and Alpha Node go back to Dandelion to save him, finding out that the false charges against the Scions have been suppressed by Gridania and Limsa Lomensa. So you two plus Yugiri rescue Raban. After this, you four go to the Waking Sands to meet Yurianje and Pippin. But before any heartfelt words can be exchanged, we're interrupted by Dulala, a member of the Syndicate who reveals that the Sultana is alive and that the poison she drank put her into a coma-like state. But she doesn't know where Nanima was being held, so in the meantime, Raban will recuperate at the Waking Sands. With that being settled, you and Alpha Node head back to Ishgard to try and convince Yassel to stop Nidhogg from assaulting Ishgard again, and Estinian joins you. So after getting permission from Emmerich, this trio meets Yassel, but she tells us why talk is futile, explaining that when the Elysian came to Corfus looking for a home, they were met by the dragons and a war started. However, the tale of love between Saint Shira and Reisvelger spread through both groups, so they made peace with each other, creating a utopia that lasted for 200 years until a group of Elysian knights led by the original King Thorden became jealous of the dragons' long lifespans and decided to take their source of power, their eyes. After this, Estinian tells the group that he can feel Nidhogg's emotions through the eye he holds, and that he has lost all reason. So Alpha Node recommends that they seek an audience with Reisvelger, so Yassel leads them to the Dravanian forelands. As we do that, your connection to Hydaelyn starts growing again. Next, we're introduced to Vidofnir, who we need to open the way towards Som Al. But she is busy with the Nath that have summoned their god Ravana, so you and Yassel deal with him. After this, the path to Som Al is open, but before we can talk to Reisvelger, we have to do some tasks for the Mughals living there in the churning mist. After this, we receive a horn that will summon Reisvelger. In our conversation with him, he scolds himself for thinking that she is Shiva's reincarnation and that what she transforms into is just an idea of what people thought Shiva was. Then he explains that Yassel told the truth about the history that led to this war, but adds that his and Nidhogg's sister was killed in the process, and that her eyes were consumed meaning that every Isgardian has some dragon blood in their veins, meaning that if they join Nidhogg, they can become dragons. And lastly, he tells our group to leave him alone. Then he leaves. After this conversation, Yassel is broken, so you, Alpha Note, and Estinian leave her behind to confront Nidhogg. But you and Alpha Note have to make a detour in Thanalan to help Raban rescue Nanamo. After we arrive, we find Nanamo in the palace and Raban gives her the antidote. Then Lolorito lets us know that the 
aliens are working on a new massive airship that will wreak destruction upon Eorzea when completed. Once all of this business is concluded, Alpha Node informs you that he is officially disbanding the Crystal Braves, realizing that he was trying to take a shortcut to unite Eorzea. So you both head back to Ishgard so you can team up with Estinian to destroy Nidhogg. You and Estinian travel to the Airy and Estinian lands the final blow on the dragon, taking his other eye. You see a vision of Nidhogg's battle with King Thornton and his 12 knights where he lost both of his eyes. And we also find out that every Isgardian is a descendant of these people, meaning that someone gave Nidhogg an eye to save his life. And that person was Vaisvalgar. After talking to him, he doesn't apologize for his actions and tells us to leave. But our trio has no time to rest because the heretics are attacking Ishgard. Luckily, we arrive in time so Yassel can calm down her people. After the city has calmed down, you, Hashafan, and Astinian go back to House for Temps. Emmerich is there and plans to confront the Archbishop on the true history of Ishgard. In the meantime, you, Alpha Node, and Tatru ask Hilda the Mongrel for help in case you need to save Emmerich from the Archbishop. But before she can agree, you're attacked by one of the Heaven Sword. And after that skirmish, you are informed that Emmerich has been imprisoned. So Lucia will save Emmerich and you will look for the Archbishop. You eventually find him, but he's getting away on an airship with the Heaven Sword. Emmerich, as his son, begs him to tell everyone the truth. But unfortunately, Thordin the Seventh doesn't want Ishgard to change, believing that everything that they have built up until now will be for nothing. So as you and Hashafant try to catch the ship, one of the Heavens War attempts to snipe you, but Hashafant blocks the blow and dies in the process. After grieving, everyone figures out that the Heavens Ward and Thordin the Seventh are looking for Ozzy's Law. So you're informed that Thordin's airship was seen by scouts in the Sea of Clouds, and you ask Sid to take you there. This is where you meet a friendly Vanu tribe who tells you that Bismarck has the key to Ozzy's Law in his stomach. So Sid finds a way for you to fight the Primal and you defeat it, but you're ambushed by Thordin and an Asian taking the key with them. They leave heading towards Ozzy's Law. After this, you go back to the Vanu tribe, but they're being harassed by the Gaulian Emperor, Varus, and his troops. But Lucia swoops in to save the day, so they retreat to the giant airship that Lolo Rito mentioned. After this interruption, you try to follow Thordin the Seventh to Aziz Law, but are stopped by a barrier. Sid proposes that we create a ram of condensed aether to pierce the barrier, but we need an expert in the field. Luckily, Tataru has found a lead on one of the scion's whereabouts, Yistola. We find out that she used a spell that threw her into the life stream, and that the only way to find her is to trace her presence from where she cast the spell and to follow the trail. Their search leads them to Gridania with Khan Siena and Yistola's sister, help you bring her back. Yastola quickly informs us that she doesn't know how to make a ram out of Aether, but her former master Matoya should. So they go to the Dravanian hinterlands to find her. Matoya shares her knowledge on etheric convergence after we find her notes on it in the Great Library. But before we go back to Ishgard, Matoya figures out that Yastola is blind and is using her life force to sense the things around her. So we bring the book to Sid and he creates the ram. But before we leave, Yorianje gives us a white oversight, knowing that the Asians will be on Isis Law. So you, Alphanode, Sid, Estinian, and Yastola go to Isis Law, but you are attacked by the giant Gaulian airship who follows you through the barrier. But Yassel takes down the ship, sacrificing herself in the process. So the group lands on Isis Law safely. But as your group continues, they let you go on as they hold off the Gaulians that crash landed. Also, Estinian gives gives you Nidhogg's eye just in case you need it. After this, you and Midgar Sam encounter Tiamat. Tiamat explains that she was captured by the Allegan Empire thousands of years ago and stays on Aziz La in exile as self-punishment for allowing the Asians to resurrect Bahamut by summoning him like a primal, describing this primal as a mockery of what he once was. This talk with Tiamat and Midgar Sam restores your connection to Hydaelyn completely. Seeing this, Midgar 
Psalm is convinced that you deserve Heidelin's blessing and allows you to ride on his back to the final battle. As you fight your way inside, you fight La Habrea and Igeon, and you defeat both of them. After this, you use the white orosite and Nidhogg's eye to destroy Igeon, and before La Habrea escapes, Thordin the Seventh and the Heaven Sword arrive with the corpse of the original King Thordin and Nidhogg's other eye. Then the Archbishop transforms into a primal called King Thordin and then destroys La Habrea in one hit. After this, you fight King Thordin and the Heaven Sword in their primal forms and win. As the Archbishop passes away, he asks, what are you? But you don't have time to think about this question because Estinian arrives to take both eyes, but is taken over by Nidhogg's spirit and the dragon is reborn. After this, you head back to Ishgard with your remaining companions. When you arrive, Midgar Psalm warns everybody about Nidhogg, telling them if they truly want peace, they will have to face him. Immediately following this, Ishgard joins the Eorzean Alliance as you and your friends begin to restore the Scions to their former glory. But we cut away to see that Elidibus has his Warrior of Darkness that you will be facing very soon. After a short rest, we get back into action with Emmerich telling us his plans to contact the dragons and Lucia will act as his envoy, so you introduce her to Vidovnir. The talk goes well, but Vidovnir explains that she needs to consult Reisfelger before she agrees to anything. After this, you, Alphanot, and Yishtola meet Kryl in New Charlene. She is here to help the Scions find Thancred, but she needs Matoya's crystal eye. Kryl tracks him down to the Dravanian Forelands, where we encounter the Warriors of Darkness. They sneak attack us, but Thancred saves the day, so the Warriors of Darkness retreat. Thancred explains what happened after leaving Uldar, and lets everybody know that he can't use magic anymore. Meanwhile, in Ishgard, Emmerich was stabbed, throwing Ishgard into chaos. Then a mob takes control of the vault with hostages, so Emmerich and the Scions storm the vault, defeating the mob along the way. Unfortunately, one of the priests has taken the child hostage and throws her off the roof, but Vidofnir arrives, saving the child's life. She tells everyone in attendance that Nidhogg is coming, and then she leaves. After this, the Scions start gathering their old allies and looking for Menphilia. Their findings lead them to Master Matoya asking for permission to use the Anti-Tower, a Charlene construction that will allow you to look at the Ethereal Sea. You enter the tower and meet Menphilia. She explains that she became a vessel for Hydaelyn and tells us about the existence of Zodiac. This is the god that the Asians serve and she begs you to defeat them. After this, you explain Menphilia's fate to everyone, then you're invited to a ceremony that will be a show of peace between the dragons and Ishgard. So you head towards Falcon's Nest. In the middle of enjoying the festivities, you get poisoned and knocked out. When you wake, chaos has erupted due to a group of people who don't want peace with the dragons. This rebellion is quelled at Emilian's order. After this, we go back to Ishgard to assist them in a joint training exercise against the best forces of Gridania, Limsa and Uldar. After Ishgard's victory, the conference continues with Emmerich giving a speech that convinces everyone to give peace with the dragons a chance. And he caps off the speech with a mural depicting Shiva and Reisvelger. But he is interrupted by Nidhogg who attacks Vidofnir and tells Ishgard to be ready because he is coming. Later on, you and Alphanode resolve yourselves to save Estinian. After this, Emmerich requested that we help him recruit Reisvelger to defend Ishgard, and we agree. So you two and Emmerich talk to Reisvelger with Mirgar Sam vouching for you as well. After hearing you plead your case, Reisvelger gives each of you a trial to overcome to prove if you can back up your words. You, Alphanode, and Emmerich pass your trials, allowing Reisvelger to trust man once again. After this, you three ride into battle on Dragonback. Reisvelger immediately attacks Nidhogg, but is overpowered because he gives you one of his eyes. This allows you to fight Nidhogg on equal footing and you defeat him. But he still has control of Estinian's body, so you and Alphano try to rip the eyes away, but you don't have enough strength until Hoshafon and Yassel's spirits help you. Then you two throw Nidhogg's eyes into the abyss below you. After a short break, you visit Estinian who seems to be in good health. He also gives up the mantle of the Azure Dragoon. Then Emmerich is appointed to the highest position in Ishgard's reformed government. Next, you and Emmerich have dinner but are interrupted by the arrival of Thancred and an injured Alizé. Thancred explains that he's been tracking the Warriors of Darkness and found out that Alizé was doing the same, but she doesn't have the same level of skill 
Jill as him when it comes to stealth, so she was caught. So Alizé and Thancred were almost back to Ishgard where she got shot in the shoulder with a poisoned arrow. But before she is taken to the doctor, she tells everyone that the Warriors of Darkness are making the Beast Tribes summon primals and that the Ixo are trying to summon Garuda again so you and Alpha Note stop it from happening. After this, the Warriors of Darkness show up with a new member. They don't fight you because Elidibus may get angry, but they explain that they come from one of the 13 reflections and due to their actions, light has consumed their world. So they have come to the source to break down the walls separating their worlds so their home can have balance and go back to normal. But this would kill many people in the process and after this, they leave. So you two go back to Ishgard and see that Alizé is feeling much better and after discussing this new information with everyone, you, Alpha Note, and Alizé go to Yorianje for advice on what to do next. Yorianje lets us know that he's been hearing rumors that Titan may be summoned again so you head to Camp Overlook to handle the situation. This is where you meet Gabu, a young kobold that asks you to stop his leader from summoning Titan to save his parents. But you don't make it in time. Gabu's parents have already been sacrificed and Titan is summoned. Even though he's stronger than last time, you defeat him again. But Gabu was tempered but because he isn't violent, Limsa Lomensa will take care of him for the time being. Then the game cuts away where you see the Warrior of Darkness's new companion explain how to save his world faster. After this, you go back to the Waking Sands where Yorianje informs you that a large number of crystals have been sent to a resistance group in Little Alamigo, meaning that somebody is trying to summon a primal, so you, Alpha Note, and Alizé investigate. You and Alpha Note catch a speech from the Griffin, the leader of this new resistance group, but you also find Yida and Papalimo. They inform you that they've never met the Griffin and that the person giving the speech was a stand-in, on top of the fact that he doesn't trust the Scions. So after explaining why you're there, Yida and Papa Limo get you a meeting with the Griffin's double, hoping that he knows some of the Griffin's real plans. He explains that they won't use them for summoning anything, but will give them to the Amalja in exchange for their help in taking back Alamigo. After this meeting, you call in Thancred to assist you with the Amalja, but the Warriors of Darkness got there first and slaughtered the Amalja. Then they try to destroy you, but you're saved by Yorianje, revealing to everyone that he was working with the Warriors of Darkness as a double agent to help the Scions. After the Warriors of Darkness are defeated, we find out that they are Asians, so we can't kill them. After this, you use your crystal to causing a chain reaction that teleports everyone to Hydaelyn's realm. Yorianje asks Hydaelyn if they can speak with Menphilia and they do. Menphilia decides to go with the Warriors of Darkness to save their world on Hydaelyn's behalf, meaning that this is the last time the Scions will ever see her. But before they leave, the Warrior of Darkness tells you that it doesn't matter if you have the power of light or darkness, just continue doing what's right. Then they leave. After this, all of the Scions reunite at the Rising Stone. They restructure their organization to allow everyone to pursue their own goals and call upon each other when needed. And Cryo officially joins the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. But before we split up, we give Tupsamati to Papalimo. But we cut away to see that the Griffin is working with Elidibus and that they have Nidhogg's eyes. After a short break from their duties, the Scions gather once again to elect a new leader of the group. But before they make a choice, you're interrupted by an Alamegan resistance member, Monago stumbling through the door. She asks the Scions to stop the Griffin's attack on Belsar's wall because he wants to start a war on Eorzean land to force the Eorzean alliance to take back Alamigo. So the Scions split up to tell the alliance leaders about what's going on. After this, the Scions and the leaders gather in the Twelves Wood to have a meeting in Gridania so they prepare for war and go into battle because the Griffin disguised his troops in Grand Company uniforms to trick the Garleans into believing that Eorzea is launching an attack on them. After fighting your way through the battle, you find the Griffin, who turns out to be Ilbert, and you defeat him. But before he dies, he sacrifices his comrade and even his own life to summon a primal stronger than Bahamut. To stop the primal's rampage, Papa Limo uses Tupsamati to seal the beast before it forms, sacrificing his life in the process. After this, the game cuts away to see a giant man arriving at the Waking Sands, who was found by Yorianje. So the Scion the alliance leaders and Sid go back to Gridania after the battle to figure out what to do about the primal. But as they are stumped for an answer, Nero arrives 
and he suggests that they dig up Omega. After a debate, everyone agrees to wake up Omega, with you, Sid, Nero, Yugiri, and some other scions going on an expedition to get the weapon. But this group makes a detour at the Rising Stones, and the giant man that Yurianje found comes in right behind us. His name is Gosetsu, and he has come to get Yugiri at the request of their master. But she explains that she can't leave until she repays her debt to the scions by dealing with Omega. So the group splits up and you go to the Kartanu Flats with Sid, Nero, Yugiri, and Gosetsu. But when you get there, the Garlean Grinwalt and his troops try to stop you. So Sid and Nero go inside to activate Omega while the rest of you hold the Garleans off. After the skirmish, the rest of you go inside as well, where we activate Omega and let the Primal Papalimo trap and Omega fight. Omega fights the Primal to a draw with both of them retreating. After this, your group goes back to Gridania to tell the Alliance leaders what happened. At this meeting, they decide to make contact with the Alamegan resistance to take back Girabania and specifically Alamigo, where Yida tells us that her real name is Lys and she finally takes off her mask. She explains that her father used to be a resistance leader, but they got separated and she never saw him again. She declares that she will fight for Alamigo's freedom, then Gotsetsu and Yugiri leave for Doma. After this, everyone returns to the Rising Stones because the Alliance has requested the Scions help. They want the Scions to secure the consent of the Alamegan resistance before they start taking Girabania back. After this, Lise leads your group to Raugar's Reach to talk to a resistance leader, Conrad. He accepts the offer from the Alliance, but explains that he only speaks for the people in Raugar's Reach. He promises to help convince the other factions and that he needs more people due to the people he lost in Ilbert's sacrifice and morale being low. After this meeting, you, Alize, and Monago go to Raban. They come up with a plan for the Alliance and Resistance to engage the Garleans in open combat and win, hoping that they will inspire the other Alamegans to try again. After this, you and Lise go to a village looking to recruit people, but the people there have had their spirits broken. This leads you to doing some odd jobs, which brings the group into an encounter with the Skulls and their leader for Dola, a group of Alamegans who work for the Garlean Empire. After this, we cut away to see the Crown Prince Xenos getting tired of waiting and wishes to take the fight to Eorzea, so Fordola gives him a suggestion to attack Valgar's Reach. So you and some of your comrades are on a scouting mission and the Garleans attack while you're gone. But after seeing the smoke, you rush back in. In this conflict, Yashtola is heavily injured, putting her out of commission for a while. Then you and Xenos fight, but he defeats you. After the attack, you make a plan to fight Xenos on two fronts by splitting his attention between Girabania and Doma. So you, Lise, Alize, Alphanote, and Tartaru head to Kugane, a city near Doma, where they meet Hancock, who Lolorito sent to help the Scions with whatever they needed, and the first order of business is to find Yugiri and Gosetsu, so you can help the Dome in Liberation Front. So they look for a way to cross the Ruby Sea, because that's the only way to get to Doma from Kugane, but unfortunately it's controlled by the Confederacy, which makes things complicated. Your search on how to get to the Ruby Sea brings the Scions to encounter a blue Kojin named Soroban. He lets you use his ship, but before you leave Kugane, you hear some rumors of a man who may be Gosetsu, and the rumors are true. After reuniting with the giant man, everyone except for Alpha Node and Tatru goes to the Ruby Sea. This is where you find out the Red Kojin are working with the Garleans, and you meet Yotsuyu, the lady who Xenos left in charge of Doma. After witnessing her cruelty, Gosetsu gives himself up as a hostage, sparing the villagers, and he directs the rest of your group to a tower where the leader of the Confederacy lives. When we get to the tower, Rasho, the leader, explains that they'll only fight the Garleans if there is a sign they could win. So Alice decides to give them their sign by defeating the Red Kojin. To do this, they need help from the Blue Kojin, and they get blessed by the Kami, allowing you, Alize, and Lise to breathe underwater to accomplish a task for them. After doing this, the Blue Kojin tells you how to deal with the Red Kojin, and it boils down to defeating Susano, a primal. After defeating their god, the Red Kojin abandoned their post, meaning that the Garleans lose their numerical advantage against the Confederacy. So the Confederacy saves Gosetsu and the village he was protecting. Plus, they regain control of the Ruby Sea. After this, you reunite with Gosetsu and walk into Yanxia, finally making it to Doma. When you enter a village called Namai, the villagers are 
are apprehensive to all of you, some of them even crying because of your arrival. A teenager takes your group to the House of the Fierce, the headquarters of the Domain Liberation Front, and Yugiri is here as well. She tells us that she has found Lord Hien, the rightful ruler of Doma. He is at the Azim Step, but she informs us that Hien will only fight the Garleans if the people of Doma want to fight. So it is up to us to rekindle the flames of rebellion. This leads us to rescue the hostages who supported the Confederacy's actions against the Garleans. But when you and Yugiri rescue them, their spirits are completely broken with no will to fight. Even though Yugiri's words sway some of them, they still go home. After this, Xenos arrives in Doma and Yugiri attempts to assassinate him, but she fails. So you team up to fight Xenos, but you lose again. As Xenos is about to kill you, your allies and the villagers you saved come to save you. After this, Xeno goes back to Girabania and you, Lys, and Gosetsu head to the Azim Step to meet Lord Hien. He orders Yugiri to return to Yanzia and prepare their forces for his return. The rest of you will help Hien and the Mole win Nadam, a competition between the tribes in the Azim Step. This way, Hien can bolster his army because whoever wins Nadam leads the tribes. The Mole allows all of you to join Nadam, but your group has to conquer a trial at Badam's Metal before they're eligible to participate. After finishing the trial, the Ornir force you to meet their leader, Magni. After forcing you to do a task, Magni allows you to go back to the mall. After one more night of rest, the Nadam begins the next day. The competition is fierce, but you and your comrades win. You become the Kagan, which means you're the king of the Exo until the next Nadam. Immediately afterward, Grinwald attacks, so everyone teams up to defeat him and his comrades. Next, Hien explains the situation in Doma and the tribes agree to help us. So you head back to Yangzia to carry out Alphanote's plan with one change from Lord Hien. The Blue Kojin will destroy Doma Castle's support, flooding the palace, forcing Yotsuyu to the top floor, making it easy to find her. So the next day comes and we execute the plan perfectly, until you face Grinwald one last time. After defeating the cyborg, we find Yotsuyu and kill her. But the castle is crumbling, so Gosetsu holds up the roof so we can escape. And with that being finished, the Scions go back to Girabania to help the Alamegan resistance and the Eorzean alliance. But before we leave, Hien promises that he'll help Eorzea by sending troops of his own after Doma's government is established. Next, the game cuts away to see that Cryo has been taken hostage by Xenos. After explaining what happened in Doma, you're, they realize that Garlemald is on the defensive and they will seize the opportunity. Our first task is to capture Castrum Veldon you take back the castrum, but there is a report from the Ananta that one of their tribes, the Quiliana, is trying to summon a primal, Siri Lakshmi, because the Quiliana princess was killed in a battle with the Skulls. So your group tries to plead with the Quiliana, but they don't listen to you, and they help Siri Lakshmi fight you. After defeating the primal, the game cuts away to see Cryo being experimented on, and Fordola has been given an artificial enhancement, with an order from Xenos. Now the game moves back to the Scions, Alliance, and the Resistance taking the Watchtower. But the Watchtower and many people on both sides are shot down by the cannon at Castrum Abania under Fordola's command. In this attack, Conrad dies and tells Lys to lead Rauga's Reach in his place. After this, Astinian appears and disables the cannon, giving everyone enough time to storm Castrum Abania. But Alize gets injured and we find Fordola, but she escapes. After taking Castrum Abania, we start the final push in Girabania, making our way to Alamigo. Raban lays out the plan to take back the city with the main goals being keeping the civilians safe and finding Xenos. He says that the Scions will be a special unit with saving Cryo as their main goal. The Scions secure a path into the city and Thancred appears to lead them to Cryo, but Fordola is here as well, but we defeat her and take her into custody, in addition to rescuing Cryo. Once we get back to headquarters, the Scions figure out that Fordola Dola has been given an artificial echo and enhanced physical abilities due to her operation, which could explain Xenos' strength as well. After this, you and Alphano stop a Garlean squadron of Wolfman by explaining that Lord Hien is alive and they could go back to Doma. So they promise to help the resistance when the fighting starts in the city. As the alliance breaks down the doors to the city, Hien arrives with air support. After this, you enter the city and fight Xenos in the throne room and have a draw, but he leads you outside to reveal that he's captured the primal Shinryu and used his version of the 
artificial echo to fuse with the primal. So you fight the primal that Omega couldn't defeat and you win, separating Xenos in the process. After this, your comrades arrive to arrest Xenos but he offs himself after finally being satisfied in a fight. After his death, all of the Alamegans join in singing Alamigo's national anthem. After this, we cut away to see that Elidibus is working with Emperor Varus. Then the game moves back to Rauga's Reach, where Elise tells everyone that she's leaving the Scions to serve as the leader of Rauga's Reach, but they promise to stay friends regardless of that. After finishing your adventures, you run into Arinvald who invites you and Alphano to explore the tomb of the Mad King Theoderic, with the hopes of finding his treasure to help the cost of running Alamigo. After this, you three tell Elise what you did, but are interrupted when a riot breaks out because Fordola hasn't been executed. Luckily, Raban steps in and calms the people down. After this, you, Alphanode, Arinvald, and Lise talk to Fordola. All of you try to convince Fordola to help Alamigo instead of asking for death. None of you make any progress until you and Fordola look into each other's past by using the Echo. So you leave Fordola with her thoughts, wondering how you deal with everything that you've been through. After this, you leave your friends to help Nanamo. She wants to let Raban choose if he wants to come back to Uldar or serve his homeland, Alamigo. So she asks for your help to prove to Raban that he doesn't have to watch over her anymore. This leads to her having a meeting with Lolorito where she makes a deal with him that will allow the Alamegan refugees to return home and make Uldar a lot of money, proving that she can deal with the monitorist by herself. After this, you and your comrades oversee the first meeting of the various leaders of Giribania, where Lise declares that they don't need a king anymore and proposes the idea of a republic. The meeting is going well until the Quillana queen summons Siri Lakshmi to temper everyone in the room. So you and Arinvald hold off the primal while Raban and Alphanode protect the leaders and lastly Lise goes to get help. And just when we can't hold out anymore, Lise brings Fordola to help. So Alphanode protects the leaders while the rest of you defeat Shiri Lakshmi. After this, Fordola goes back to a cell and you talk with Raban. But after you finish talking, Nanamo speaks to Raban, telling him to stay in Giribania and help rebuild his homeland. So with that, the best friends go their separate ways and the following morning, Raban announces that he's staying in Giribania. So with your business in Alamigo finished, you, Alphanote, and Alize get a request to come to Kugane. Hancock tells everyone that he's been getting reports that people have seen Gosetsu and Yotsuyu around the area. You three join Yugiri to find Gosetsu before the Garleans find him. But when you get to the Ruby Sea, the Garleans are attacking the Confederacy and this is where you find Gosetsu protecting Yotsuyu. After a small skirmish, Gosetsu explains that they survived the castle collapse. Then they drifted to a desert island and Yotsuyu lost her memories. After this explanation, everyone goes to the House of the Fifth to meet Lord Hien for his judgment on Yotsuyu. Hien decides to hide her in the castle for now so no one can can see her. After this, you, Yugiri, and Hien meet an ambassador from Golemald named Asashi, who is Yotsuyu's stepbrother. He explains that he wants to negotiate peace with Doma, and the meeting moves to the Doman Enclave. The main talking point of this conversation is how Golemald wants to form an alliance against the practice of summoning primals, but Hien asks Asashi how they're supposed to trust each other considering recent events. So Asashi proposes a prisoner exchange for the Domans that Golemald Mold has captured and the Garleans that Doma has captured, making it clear that Yotsuyu must be a part of the deal. Hien ends the meeting by saying that he needs to consider Asashi's proposal, so in the meantime you and a couple of others show Asashi around Doma until you find the Red Kojin harassing a young boy and his sister. After this fight, your group goes back to the Doman Enclave to witness Hien's decision on what to do with Yotsuyu. He has a conversation with Gosetsu, deciding that if Yotsuyu's memories return, by the time of the exchange, she will go to Garlemald. But if her memories don't return, he will allow her to live in Doma. So Hien agrees to the prisoner exchange, but he tells Asashi about his condition with Yotsuyu, and Asashi agrees. But he asks to see his sister before he leaves. After this, he leaves for Garlemald, but before he gets on his ship, he makes it very clear that he hates Doma and you specifically for killing Xenos. After he leaves, you tell everyone what he said so they're not to 
trust him. Then the game cuts to Asashi meeting with his sister and he gives her a crescent shaped mirror and we see that Xenos is alive. After this we save Yotsuyu from a mob at Namai after she went to get root for Gosetsu. Yotsuyu is regaining her memories and apologizing for what she's done even though she doesn't have the full picture yet. After this we meet with Asashi and his subordinates. He explains that the dome and hostages are on his airship but before things can proceed Asashi brings out his parents to jog Yotsuyu's memories and it does but Yotsuyu doesn't admit it. After this everyone has a meeting about everything that has happened. Then at the end of this conversation a maid tells us that Yotsuyu has disappeared so we go looking for her. In your search you find Yotsuyu's step parents dying. Then you get a vision showing that they're still horrible people by trying to sell Yotsuyu again. But at this point Yotsuyu has all of her memories back and she murders them for revenge. After this Asashi approaches her offering her an opportunity to get revenge on Doma itself. After this you, he and Alphanode and Yugiri meet Asashi on his ship and Yotsuyu reveals herself. Then she transforms into the primal Tsukiyomi so you fight her while he and Alphanode and Yugiri look for the prisoners on the ship. After defeating Yotsuyu Asashi comes in and shoots her taunting you over the fact that you can't kill him because he's an ambassador. But luckily for everyone Yotsuyu had enough strength to kill him herself and after this she passes away. After this one of Asashi's subordinates Maxima confirms that Xenos is alive which leads to confusion because Xenos is supposed to be buried near Alamigo. Then they do the prisoner exchange with no issues but Alpha Note interrupts asking Maxima if he can go to Garlemald as an ambassador for Doma and investigate Xenos. After this the Doman prisoners are reunited with their families and Gosetsu tells everyone that he is putting down his sword. He explains that he will go on a journey offering prayers for souls who died suffering. After this you go back to Girabania and confirm that Xenos' body is gone. Then the game shows us that Xenos' soul is in the Alamegan soldier's body. Next we cut to a scene where the ship Alpha Node is on is shot down and he is attacked but he's saved by a mysterious man who has Asian masks hanging from his belt. After this you meet Thancred to give you an update on how the Gaulian Empire is dealing with other nations after the uprising in Doma and the alliance is sending aid to help those smaller nations. But the most important point of this conversation is that an Asian is using Xenos' body and that Alpha Node never reached Garlemald. So Thancred's information leads you, Alize, Hien, Yastola and Yugiri to investigate the ship's crash site in the burn. The group doesn't find anything useful other than some Allegan ruins so we go back to Doma where Lise is waiting for us. She tells us that Alamigo has officially joined the Eorzean Alliance and that the leaders of the five nations are having a meeting hoping that Hien will join them as well. So Hien accepts the invitation but he tells Lise to inform the Alliance that he needs to make sure that Doma's defenses are set up before he comes. Hien wants to make an alliance with the eastern nations of Doma, Hingashi, Suinosato, Naxia and Damasca to combat the Asians and the Gaulian Empire. Yastola suggests that they use the Allegan ruins at the burn to make an energy field like Azizla so Garlemald can't invade Doma by air. But to power this shield they need a large amount of energy so he suggests that we use an Allegan ether regulator in the Azim step but we need the permission of the Dothral to use it so we go and ask them and they agree but Sadu their leader wants to fight the warrior of light in exchange. This fight turns into a giant battle between your group of Hien and Yastola, the Dothral and the Ornir. After Sadu is satisfied your group goes back to the Aether Regulator and Yastola connects it to the ruins in the burn. After this Hien and the Scions join the leaders of the Alliance at the meeting in Alamigo. At this meeting Thancred proposes that the Alliance use ninjas to infiltrate Garlemald to spread the rumor that Xenos' corpse is being used by a dark presence to create a war of succession and make Garlemald weaker from the inside. But before everyone agrees to the plan the Scions all double over in pain as they hear a voice in their head asking for their help but it stops quickly. Afterwards Thancred passes out. After getting him to a doctor Khan Sienna explains to the Scions that they were being called. Meaning someone was trying to take their souls from their body and take them somewhere else. So the remaining Scions meet Yorianje at the Rising Stones who explains that he heard the voice too. They discuss the fact that some areas of the world are running low on Aether and that it's 
strange, but before they can talk anymore, the voice calls them again. This time, Yastola and Yoriandre's souls are taken. After she calms down, Alizé invites you to Limsa Lomensa to visit Gabu, who is still under the effects of tempering. Then we cut away to see Varus talking to his grandfather, Solus Zos Galvis, in a young body, and he reveals that he's an Asian. Then he exclaims that he only created the Empire for the sole purpose of sowing the seeds of chaos to carry out his goal of rejoining. Then the game cuts to a scene where Alphanode and the people who saved him arrive at their camp where everyone is dead. The man named Shadowhunter tells Alphanode that Golemold has been developing a gas called Black Rose and if you breathe it in once you die. Then we go back to the Rising Stones and Cryo is back in action. She recommends that we track the Aether of the Scions that were called as she did for Thancred. So you, Alizé, and Cryo go to Master Matoya to use her crystal eye again. Unfortunately, when Cryo tries to track them, she says that their trail just stops, leaving them confused. After this, you and Alizé go to Giribania to meet Maxima, who came to Alamigo without Alphano. He goes over the events I talked about earlier and clarifies that Alphano chose to stay in Garlemald to continue his investigation with the Asian hunters. He also tells everyone that the Empire is planning to invade Alamigo, so Raban plans to open up negotiations with the commander of the army so they can have as much time as possible to set up their defenses. After this, you and Alizé are called again, but neither of you are taken, so you two go to Doma to update Hien on the current situation. Next, he invites you to see the barrier in the burn activate and it works with an Imperial ship not getting past. The ship lands with Shadow Hunter coming out carrying an unconscious Alphanode. Shadow Hunter tells us that Alphanode has been called, and you figure out that this man is Gaius Van Belsar. Gaius explains that he wants revenge against the Asians and explains that the Red Mass Asians are the strongest, with Elidibus and an Asian named Emmett Selk being the only ones left that we know about. He believes that Elidibus is currently using Xenos' body. Also, before he leaves, he informs us about the gas called Black Rose and that he destroyed the facility making it, so it will be a while before they can use it. After this, you head to the front lines of Alamigo, you, Alizé, and the Alliance leaders are invited to talk with Varus before the battle begins. The main point of this meeting is that Varus reveals that he wants to commit wide-scale genocide by helping the Asians complete the rejoining with the 13 reflections and returning the world to how it used to be. After this, everyone calls him crazy and the war officially begins. After this, you, Alizé, Hien, and Yugiri fight your way through waves of enemies and defeat Varus' guards. You take a short rest, but when you and Alizé are called, she is taken, leaving you and Cryo as the only remaining scion. After getting Alizé off the field, you head back into battle to fight Elidibus in Xenos' body, but you're called in the middle of your fight and teleported to a place you don't recognize, and you meet the person who's been calling you. He tells you that the battle you're fighting is pointless and that you need to open the gates in the Crystal Tower to get to the first. Then you wake up in Ishgard where Emmerich explains that you were saved by Estinian when you were called, and that Thancred's plan for Garlemald is working. After leaving Ishgard, you return to the Rising Stones, and Tartaru has returned from Kugane. Then you explain to her what's been happening, so Tartaru theorizes that the other scions must be with the man who called you. So you, Tartaru, and the remaining scions that aren't affected by the calling search the Crystal Tower. Then you wander off and find a device only to be called once again, but this time you let the voice take you. Waking up in the forest under harsh sunshine. You run into a traveler who says that it's night which leaves you confused but you don't linger on this too long and walk towards the settlement in the distance. However, you are stopped by the captain of the city guard Lena who lets you through after the crystal exarch, leader of the Crystarium explains that you're one of his guests. He explains that we are currently in the first and that he called the scions here to help him save this world because the first has been consumed by light and only one tenth of the world is livable. Then he finishes the conversation by saying that the monsters called Sin Eaters are born from the light and that you can save the source by saving the first. Then you continue the conversation inside the Crystal Tower on the first. Here the Crystal Exarch explains that time flows at different paces between the first and the source, meaning that some of the Scions have been here for a long time. But currently time is running at a similar pace between the two worlds, so you shouldn't worry about it. He 
also tells you that they came to the first as spirits, separate from their bodies, meaning that they have no way back home at the moment, but they're still working to try and stop the dark future Yorianje saw. After this, the Crystal Exile gives you a tour of the Crystarium and introduces you to Feo Ul, a pixie that will act as a gateway to send and get stuff from home. So you make a pact with her. Then you retire to your room for the night and this is where you meet the warrior of darkness, Ardbert, who is confused that you can see him. He explains that Menphilia and his comrades gave up their existence to stop the flood of light, leaving him alone and then he leaves. So the next day you see the Exarch and he tells you where the Scions are located and recommends that you find one of the twins first due to the ease of getting to their locations. So you go to Colossia to meet Alphano. When you meet he explains that he wants to get into Yumor, a city where the richest people in the first spend their days in luxury, to gather information and form a plan about how to save the first. As you get closer to the city, he explains that people camp outside of the city, hoping to be chosen to get in based on their talents, and we see an example of this. Also, you notice the mysterious food called Mio. After this, Alphano pulls you away, explaining that he has a plan to get in Yulmore. However, Kaishir steals his idea, but is caught by you two. So Kaishir explains why he has to get in Yulmore, so Alphano takes pity on him and lets him go. So we go back to the camp outside of Yulmore, where they're looking for an artist for the Chais, and Alphano fulfills this request by explaining that you're his assistant, getting both of you into Yulmore. You meet the Chais fulfilling their request, but your attention is dragged away when you hear a scream, only to find out that it's Kaishir. He's being punished by the mayor of Yulmor, Valfrey, because he entered the city without permission. After arguing with Valfrey on top of finding out that he can control Sin Eaters, you and Alphanode get Kaishir out of there. Then you go to Amarang to get Alize, and Alphanode goes to the Crystarium. During your adventures in Amarang, you meet Tessaline, the head caretaker of the inn for people who've been corrupted by Sin Eaters, and she knows Alize. After you get to her inn, you find Alize fighting Sin Eaters, but you don't don't have time to rest because you, her, and Tessaline have to find Halric, one of the patients at the inn. Your group finds him but a Sin Eater is trying to change him into a Sin Eater and in the process of saving him Tessaline gets turned into a Sin Eater herself. After this you and Alize take Halric back to the inn and go back to the Crystarium. The Exarch explains that defeating the Light Wardens may cause the lesser Sin Eaters to disappear and get rid of the light all over the first. Then the Exarch explains how rejoining works. As the source was split apart, giving birth to its 13 reflections, none of them were as balanced as the source, meaning that if one of the reflections were filled with too much of one element, that world would be consumed by it, and that extra energy would go back to the source, resulting in a calamity. After his explanation, you, Alize, Alphanode, Lena, and the Exar go to Homner Switch to defeat a Light Warden attacking the village. After the feeding the warden, you absorb the light it contained, bringing night back to Lakeland. After this, the Exarch begins calling you and the Scions the Warriors of Darkness, and you go back to your room in the Crystarium. Then Ardbert reappears, explaining that he's been watching your journey so far and warns you that your journey will cost you something. Then he leaves. Then we cut away to see Estinian and Gaius teaming up in Garlemald to destroy the Black Rose facilities. The game cuts back to you and the Exarch explains that Yomo's emissary Ranjit is coming to ask questions about the dead Light Warden. Ranjit says that anyone associated with the Crystarium is found to be responsible for the Light Warden's death, Valfrey will declare war. So the Exarch doesn't admit to helping but makes it very clear that he's happy the Warden is dead. So Ranjit leaves to deliver this message to Valfrey. Then Lena reports that it looks like Yomo's forces are capturing Menphilia which leaves the Scions confused. Then the Exarch sends us to the Crystarium Library to get an explanation while he's preparing for war. This is where we find out Menphilia has been reincarnating in the first for generations to continue her fight against the Flood of Light. After this, you help the Crystarium fight off Yulmor. The Scion's main goal in this fight is to save Menphilia and to get her out of danger, but you and the Scions are beaten down by Ranjit. Then saved by Thancred and the Exarch, then we escape to Il Meg, the fairy kingdom, the home of Yorianje. After we get away from the fighting, Thancred explains that the Exarch gave them two orders to meet with Yorianje and to defeat the 
Light Warden in Ilmeg. After this, the Newman Philia explains why she ran to Lakeland without telling Thancred and gets scolded. However, our heroes are forced to play with the Pixies until Fail U works out a deal so you, Thancred, and Menphilia can see Yorianje. Yorianje explains his vision in detail, saying that when the Empire unleashed Black Rose, they couldn't stop it and the gas killed far more people than intended, destroying society itself in the process. Also, he informs us that the Light Warden is in the castle within the middle of the lake. After this, Thancred explains that three years ago, the old Menphilia took over the current one's body to explain to him that if the new Menphilia wishes to give up and stop fighting, that she'll take over her body in her place. Or if the new Menphilia wishes to fight for her own reasons, she'll give her power to the new Menphilia, ending her recycle of reincarnation. Then she leaves, asking Thancred to watch over her until the day she makes her decision. After this, the Scions ask the Pixies to let them enter the castle and they do after forcing them to play again. Next, the Scions do a couple of tasks for the people of Ilmeg until they're disturbed by the scream of the Pixie King, Titania, the Light Warden, and Ranjit with Yulmar's army entering Ilmeg. So you go to defeat Titania while the Scions stall Ranjit. But there's one issue with defeating Titania. Someone must take her items and become the new king. So Fail Ul steps in to do that so you can continue your journey. Then Fail Ul fights off Ranjit and the Yulmor soldiers and promises to help if you ask for it. Then the Scions return to the Crystarium only to be encountered by Solus who reveals that he's the Asian named Emmett Selk. He explains his frustration that you're messing up his plans and then asks to watch your journey, offering his knowledge and strength in return, explaining that the Scions don't know what his goal is in hopes that they could find some common ground. Then he leaves, promising to see them soon. After this, you go to your room where you talk to Ardbert, where he begs you not to trust Emmett Selk and to not fight blindly. The next morning, the Scions and Exarch meet Emmett Selk in the Crystal Tower, where he reiterates that he meant what he said but realizes that his presence isn't wanted, but continues to watch. The Exarch recommends that we split up to find the locations of the other Light Wardens, so Alphano takes Calusia, Alize goes to Amarang, and the rest of the Scions go to Ratika Greatwood, Yustola's home. Immediately after entering Ratika, the Scions are surrounded by the Knights Blessed, a group of people who live in the Greatwood and are led by Yustola, who doesn't recognize you until you talk due to her blindness, and your Aether having so much light due to you absorbing the Light Warden's power. After this encounter, they're brought to the village of the Knights Blessed, Sliverbow. Yustola explains that to explore the forest fully, we need to access the other part of the forest, Yixmaya, but it's guarded by a tribe of warriors who refuse to let strangers in. So she and Yurianje will try to decipher the tablet the Exarch gave you, believing that it opens a way for everyone to explore Yixmaya. The rest of you explore the city, learning about the Knights' blessed culture and your importance as the Warrior of Darkness. After this, we eavesdrop on Yurianje and Yishtola, who are discussing the effects the Light Warden's power is having on you. But before you can hear any more, the Yulmorans attack Sliverbow. Ranjit demands that the Knight Blessed answer to Yulmor now, and if they don't cooperate in time, they will be considered enemies and exterminated. After this, they discover where the Light Warden is hiding and enter another set of ruins to unlock the path. But Ranjit and an emissary catch up to you and Yishtola, claiming that he poisoned the Knight's Blessed before getting here, claiming that they have the antidote. Unfortunately, in this fight, the floor collapses and the antidote falls in, so Yishtola sacrifices herself to throw the antidote to you, falling into the pit below. After this, Ranjit gets thrown into the pit as well, then all of you head back to Fanau. Emmett Selk reappears and the Scions discuss Yishtola's fate and come to the conclusion that she used Flo again. So Emmett Selk offers to bring her back, hoping to finally gain the Scions' trust. After this, the Scions head into the Quitana Ravel to destroy the Light Warden. After beating the monster, you absorb its light and bring back the night sky. As the Scions leave the ruins, they stop to look at a mural, and Emmett Selk appears to tell them what the pictures mean. He explains that the Asians were the original inhabitants of the source, but as the end of days were coming for them, they prayed and sacrificed, creating Zodiac to save them, and he did. But there were some Asians who didn't believe in Zodiac, and from their fears, Hydaelyn was born 
Reborn to be his equal and opposite, so the two of them fought until Hydaelyn won, striking Zodiac so hard that she split him and the source into 14 pieces. Then he drops the bomb that Hydaelyn and Zodiac are the most powerful primals and that the rejoining is a way to bring back his people. After this, the Scions head back to the Crystarium and go their separate ways. You head back to your room where Albert asked you if you two are just slaves to Hydaelyn's will. After hearing Emmett Selk's explanation, but you don't answer. Then the game cuts away to Astinian and Gaius discussing the possibility of another Asian being in the Golem Old Capital and seeing Xenos spying on them. Then the game goes back to the first where you wake up to the sounds of people scrambling. Then you, Alphanote, and Alizé help set up a barrier for the Crystarium at the Exarch's request, getting it up before the Sin Eaters arrive. Then you three join the rest of the Scions and the City Guard to protect Lakeland. The casualties are heavy, but they manage to fend off the Sin Eaters. After this victory, Varfri shouts a message from Yulmo's airships, gloating about his victory. Next, the Scions and Emmett Selk meet the Exarch in the Crystal Tower, where they come to the same conclusion, that Varfri directly controls Sin Eaters and is the source of this attack. Then Alizé tells everyone that an abandoned mine in Western Amarang could be a hiding place for a Light Warden, but it's too big for her to explore alone, so she came back. This is when Menphilia recommends that she goes to the spot where the Flood of Light was stopped so that she can choose to give the old Menphilia her body or to get the full powers of the Oracle of Light herself. Either way, once her decision is made, they'll be able to track down the Light Warden using her powers. So with this recommendation, the Scion split up with you, Thancred, Menphilia, and Yorianje going to Amarang to get to Nabaf Arang, the site where the flood was stopped. But we have to help a rundown village to help us rebuild a Talos to push a minecart to our destination. After this, you, Thancred, and Menphilia go to Nabaf Arang, while Yorianje goes to get the other Scions. When your group gets to Nabaf Arang, you're attacked by Ranjit, so Thancred holds him off and defeats him, nearly dying in the process. Meanwhile, you and Menphilia go to the exact spot where the flood of light was stopped. After this, the old Menphilia appears and asks the new Menphilia what her choice is. The new Menphilia expresses that she wants to help the people who helped her and that she wants to save this world with her own hands. So the old Menphilia gives up the rest of her power and says goodbye for the final time. After this, Menphilia gets new hair and eye colors, then we meet with the rest of the Scions and Menphilia gets a new name and from now on will be called Rain. Then she leads everyone to the mine with the Light Warden inside. After defeating the Light Warden, there was some discomfort when you absorbed this light, but you ignored it for the time being. Later on, the Scions go back to the Crystarium and you talk to Aldbert once again. But in the middle of your conversation, the light overwhelms you again and Aldbert accidentally helps relieve your pain. After this, the Exar comes to check in on you and after he leaves, your Echo gives you a flashback of a destroyed house for attempts with two unknown people having a conversation. After waking up, you head to the Crystal Tower. Everyone agrees that it's time to fight Yulmor and finish this. However, this is where Emmett Selk interrupts and explains the history of the Asians again, but adds one important detail. Most Asians and other beings from Emmett Selk's time were split into 14 parts as well, giving birth to everyone we know now. The only three that were spared were Emmett Selk, Elidibus, and La Habrea, and that he doesn't consider anybody other than the Asians to be truly alive. Except you, he has high hopes for you. After this, we find out that Yulmo is preparing for an attack, so the Scions head to Calusia before they can build their defenses, only to find the people under Valfrey's mind control. Then Reen sees some Mjol and can sense it's made out of Sin Eaters, which explains Valfrey's mind control over the people of Yulmo. After this, the Scions fight their way through Yulmo, defeating Ranjit for the final time. After this, we confront Valfrey, and this is where we find out that he's a human Sin Eater hybrid and that he is the Light Warden of Calusia. But he escapes the Mount Gog, raising it into the air before you can fight him. Then Reen reverses the effects of Valfrey's mind control, but Alpha Note explains that every mean spirited thing that the rich of Yulmor did to the less fortunate was of their own doing. After this, the citizens of Yulmor offer their help to pursue Valfrey, and Chai Nuz offers his expertise in Talos to get the lift working again. But afterward, they were 
faced with another challenge, actually getting to Mount Gog without getting shot down. So we call upon our friends from every corner of the first to help China's build a giant Talos that can grab Mount Gog and give us a path. Then the game cuts to Xenos challenging Elidibus for his body, then the game goes back to the first. After getting on Mount Gog, the Scions fight their way through waves of Sin Eaters, holding off the weaker ones so you can fight Valfrey one on one. After defeating him, you absorb his light but it's too much for you and your soul begins to break. But the Crystal Exarch steps in to take your light and jump into the void to save everyone and at this point you figure out that the Exarch is Grahatia. But before Graha can finish his plan, he's shot in the back by M itself. He explains that he's disappointed that you couldn't contain the light and explains that if you could've, there would've been some merit in working together. Explaining that he would've seen the Scions as something more than a fractured piece of life. Then tells you that you're nearly a Sin Eater now. After this you pass out and Emixelt leaves, telling you to find him in the Tempest if you want to become a Sin Eater in peace, and takes Grahatia as a hostage. You wake up in your room at the Crystarium and open up the window seeing that the sky is filled with light once again. Then Arbert explains that the Scions are looking for a way to save you. So you wander around the Crystarium, eventually getting some encouragement from Ardbert and Fael Ul. After this you go to the Crystal Tower and get a vision that explains how this Grahatia is from an alternate timeline where you didn't stop Black Rose and the world went to chaos. He went back in time to the first by using the Crystal Tower but went back too far. So for a hundred years he set things up in the first so his plan would be ready to go once he called you to the first and extended his lifespan by fusing with the tower. After getting this revelation you try to leave the Crystarium by yourself but the rest of the Scions promise to stay with you until the very end accepting that you will most likely die. So our heroes head towards the Great Lake to ask the Fey Bismarck to take them to the depths of the Tempest but he is too busy sleeping so you call Fey or Ul who commands Bismarck to help the Scions. After getting to the bottom of the Tempest the Scions have to help the Ondo living down there to find Emmett Selk's hideout and they find an Asian city called Amarok. As they go through the city, they find out that all of the Asians and the city itself were just Emmett Selk's creations in honor of the people and home he lost. Your journey in Amarok leads you to talk to Hylodeus, who is aware that he's a creation of Emmett Selk. The main point of your conversation is to find out that nearly half of the Asians gave up their lives to create Zodiac, and that you and Albert used to be a part of the same person. Also, lastly, Emmett Selk must have known the original you but after getting this information you regroup with the Scions to face Emmett Selk. So the Scions have one last talk with Emmett Selk explaining that they get where he's coming from and because of that they will fight for their loved ones as well. So Emmett Selk challenges the Scions forcing them to fight through a recreation of Amorat's last days. Then he attacks them knocking out everyone except for you and at this moment the light overcomes you but all Albert steps in joining with you allowing your soul to hold the light within you easily and Emmett Selk sees a flash of the Asian you used to be. And then you two fight. You end up beating Emmett Selk but can't destroy him until the rest of the Scions step in using the white aura sight they brought along to let you get a finishing blow by using the access light you have. So Emmett Selk accepts his defeat gracefully asking the Scions to remember that his people once lived and they agree so he fades away. After this, the Scions and Grahatia return to the Crystarium, having a meeting in the Crystal Tower about how to get the Scions back home without killing Grahatia. So you go back to the source alone to give Tartaru and Cryo an update on what happened in the first. Then the game cuts back to Garlemald where we see that Elidibus has run away and Xenos has his body back on top of killing Varus. The game cuts back to your conversation with Cryo and Tartaru. Cryo explains that the link between the Scion's body and souls are weakening and she doesn't want to find out what happens when the link breaks. So you go back to the first and tell everyone about what Cryo said. After this, Grahatia explains how he summoned the Scions to the first, hoping that they can bounce ideas off of each other and figure out a solution. Yishtola comes up with an idea for you to carry their souls back to the first and Yurianje recommends that they use White Urusite to store their souls and that they just need to test the idea. So Graha recommends someone
someone that may be able to help and after completing their trial, Bail Luck joins you. At the Crystarium, Graha explains the situation to Bail Luck and they agree to help but request for some help with their field work. So you, Alize, Alpha Note, and Bail Luck go to Armorang to start testing their theory with familiars and to see if they can reverse the effects of the Sin Eater's corruption on the affected. After making a breakthrough, Alize points out that the Sin Eater's corruption is similar to tempering from primals and comes to the conclusion that the tempered may be cured. After this, you and Alphano go to Calusia to find Chinas who disappeared after being elected as the mayor of Yulmor. We find him just as he finds Warden, the former advisor to Yulmor's former mayor. So Chai gives Warden an answer that he can't deny and proves that he is capable enough to lead Yulmor. So after that adventure, you go back to the source to update Tartaru and Cryo once again. At this meeting, you find out that Estenia is taking care of the Scion's business while they're in the first and informs you about what's happening with the Garlemald Empire and Xenos. Then he takes his leave. After this, the game cuts to someone approaching Xenos who wants to help him find Zodiac. Then the game cuts back to you and Cryo meeting Gaius and Raban. In this meeting, Gaius reveals that the Empire is trying to rebuild the ultimate weapon and that a prototype is on its way to Eorzea. After this, you go back to the first to update everyone about everything you learned. Then Graha and Bail Luck show their progress on making a vessel for the Scion souls, but state that there is some more work to be done. After this, you and some of the Scions reveal the true history of the Warriors of Light within the first to the people of the Crystarium, so people will remember them fondly. But soon as you finish talking, a man who looks like Ardbert appears, preaching to the crowd of people that they should become the new Warriors of Light. During his speech, the Scions return to the Crystal Tower to discuss things with Bail Luck and Graha, and Yastola confirms that Ardbert is still within you, which leads them to one conclusion. Elidibus is posing as Ardbert. After this meeting, Alpha Note follows Elidibus. Yorianje leaves to inform Thancred and Ryan of the current situation, and lastly, you and Yastola go back to Yixmaya to explore some new ruins that are about the disaster that befell the Asians, which we don't find. But after exploring the ruins, Yastola thinks that if someone possesses the Echo and has been rejoined enough times that they remember things from their time as an Asian. After this, you and Yastola rendezvous with the rest of the Scions to confront Elidibus. They try to find some common ground with Elidibus, asking him to think about Emmet Selk's last words to them. But this is where Elidibus tells the Scions that he has the same goal as Emmet Selk and that he will not stray from his path. After this, Elidibus leaves. Yastola recommends that we explore the Tempest once again to learn more about the world that once was and the Asians themselves before they fight Elidibus. So the Scions ask Bismarck to take them to the ruins that they want to explore. After fighting their way through Ander, they find a room with giant crystals that held great significance to the Asians. Then a device within the room projects holograms of a meeting of Asians discussing the end of days and a defector from the convocation. But these conversations are shut down by an Asian named Vanat. The Scions figure out that these Asians summon Hydaelyn. Then they activate the device again, seeing Vanat talk about becoming Hydaelyn's heart, and she wonders if this is how the convocation felt about Elidibus, meaning that at some point Elidibus became Zodiac's heart, leaving the Scions confused about who they're fighting. After this, Yastola stays at Ander to see if she can find out more, so the rest of the Scions head to the Crystarium only to find a place in disarray. Many of the people who work for the Crystarium are resigning because of Elidibus's words. But before the Scions can even process this situation, an illusion of a star shower appears with many people hearing Hydaelyn in their head. Then Elidibus continues his deception by convincing these people that they're warriors of light. Then he tells the Scions that the Echo is a power that everyone could use and that Hydaelyn just helps people activate it. After this, everyone splits up and you go to sleep. Then the game cuts away to Xenos who was having dreams about the final days and asks his Asian companion to tell him about it. The next day you run into Elidibus who is walking aimlessly and you get a flashback of him becoming Zodiac's heart. Then you talk to Graha who reminisces about his past but you're interrupted by Reen who tells you that Thancred collapsed. After talking to him everyone concludes that the bond between his body and soul is getting weaker. So you go back to the source to check on their bodies and to update Cryo. Then she tells you that their physical conditions are deteriorating
deteriorating and that they need to get back home soon. After this, you return to the first and update the Scions on their condition. Graha and Beolug show off the completed vessels for the Scions' souls and minds, but they still have to do some testing with an extra vessel. So the Scions hunt down Elidibus's minions while you get Yastola from Ander. As you arrive, you find Yastola unconscious as the bond with her body gets weaker. Then Elidibus talks to you again and you get another vision of his past which confirms he's lost his memories. Then he kidnaps Yastola and makes you fight imitations of your friends and enemies in a gauntlet that leads to him. Then you fight Elidibus who is still using Arbut's body and defeat him. Following this, Yastola catches up to you and explains that after leaving Zodiac's heart, Elidibus became a primal and that his goal is salvation for the Asians that prayed to Zodiac and asks him does he remember why he became Zodiac's heart. Elidibus tells her that that is irrelevant and reveals that he has helped, made, and even become heroes over the years to rejoin the world. While you wait for Yastola, you follow and collect a trail of talking crystals that lead you to Hilo Deus. He explains that the crystals are fragments of the 14 convocation members and listens to your explanation of the situation with Elidibus. After listening to what you said, Hydiphilus expresses that he wants you to live. He reasons that you can't keep your promise to Emmett Selk if you're dead and gives you the last crystal of the 14th explaining that this one is from the defector that opposed the rest of the convocation and it will help you if you wish for it. After this, you and Yastola meet the rest of the Scions at Yulmore. However, another star shower appears, summoning misguided heroes from different worlds to attack you. So the Scions fight their way back to Lakeland, but realize that there are too many heroes to stop. So they let you go ahead to the Crystarium to fight Elidibus. Along the way, you find Graha who tells you that Elidibus is using the Crystal Tower to summon the heroes. So you and him go to the tower, but Graha stays inside the tower so you can fight Elidibus one on one. You confront Elidibus on his ideals one last time, then he transforms into the Warrior of Light incarnate, attacking you. But the Crystal of Azim, the defector from the Convocation of 14, activates and protects you. Then you and Elidibus battle with Graha using the Crystal Tower to deal the final blow. After this, Graha Tia reaches his limit and the Crystal begins to overtake his body. But before that happens, he puts his memories into the extra testing vessel, then he passes away. Following this, the Scions say goodbye to their friends and family that they made in the first, then they enter their vessels and you bring them back home. Then the game skips to a couple of weeks later and it's revealed that you woke up Grahatia and gave him the memories of his other self. Then he joins the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, then the game cuts away to Xenos finding out the name of this new Asian, Fan Daniel, and confirming that they're going to start their plan. Then the game goes back to the Scions getting reacquainted with their home. Then Lise comes to the Rising Stones to learn about the Scions' adventures in the first and to request the presence of the Scions at an alliance meeting in Alamigo. Except for you, Alize, and Grahatia because you three are going to continue Alize's research into curing tempering. So they go to Isis La because Grahatia says that the Allegans were interested in the subject, but they need Sid's help to extract the data from the archive node. So they go back to the Rising Stones where Sid will meet them and in the meantime find out what happened at the Alliance meeting. Thancred and Yurianje will go to Garlemald to get an accurate picture of the chaos happening in the nation and the Alliance plans to have peace talks with the various beast tribes. After that, Sid arrives and opens the archive node. The research inside reveals enough to give them a breakthrough. So Sid and Nero run simulations on how to cure tempering, which fries their computer system, but they get the answer they need. Needed. Now that they have their cure, so you, Alize, and Grahatia go to Limsa Lominsa to test out this new magic on Gabu and meet Alphanode and Yastola there as well, so they assist. Then they leave the rest to Alize, so the others wait until Alize comes back with a fully healed Gabu, who is back to normal. So their attention turns to producing as many familiars as possible, so they go to ask Master Matoya. She helps the Scions create a familiar that will create other familiars who can cast the curing spell. Following this, you, Alize, Alphanode, and Graha go to Limsa Lominsa to help Melvib get the pirates under control and to get their support in peace talks with the Beastmen. After helping Melvib with the pirates, your group goes to cure a kobold leader of his tempering, which you do. But the meeting seems like a disaster until Gabu speaks up 
and Melvib admits to Limsa-Lomensa's wrongs against the Kobolds and convinces the Kobold leader to genuinely try making peace. But before they can breathe, a mysterious tower pops up in Vilbrin, and we get reports that towers are sprouting all over the world. So they're directed to Alamigo because the Garleans look like they're going to be making a push on the city. But as soon as you arrive, Van Daniel rides into the city on the back of a dragon he calls Lunar Bahamut, and he wants to recreate the final days with the help of the towers around Eorzea. After a short rest, we pick up with the Scions listening to Dankwit's report about what he saw in Garlemald, explaining that the people were in some kind of trance building a tower that channels Aether, and that Raban wants to see the Scions in a meeting in Alamigo. So most of the Scions go. At the meeting, they learn that the scouting parties that were sent to check out the towers came back tempered, chanting glory be to Garlemald, and that the abduction of the beastmen all over Eorzea might have something to do with the towers popping up. After this, Arinvald and Fordola step up to investigate the towers because of their resistance to tempering. Then they leave to start their mission. In the meantime, the Scions split up, with your group going to Ishgard to meet up with Estinian. When we find him, he mentions that he was going to Azizla to see if Tiamat would know anything about Bahamut's resurrection. So they go with him, where Tiamat explains if Bahamut has been summoned, that means that Van Daniel must have dragons of Mercidia under his control. This leads to our heroes convincing Tiamat to help them stop Bahamut and her kids. But she is afraid of meeting Bahamut because she is still tempered by him, so Alizé promises to cure her. So after doing their research on Tiamat and multiple applications of the untempering spell, Alizé frees Tiamat and Alphano takes off her shackles. After being freed, she promises to help you in the upcoming battle against Lunar Bahamut. So all of you head to the battlefield where the Amalja are being attacked. You and the Scions fight your way through waves of enemies and you destroy Lunar Bahamut. After this, Tiamat vows that neither her nor her children will ever give the Asians the time of day again. And by helping the Amalja in their time of need, they promise to have peace talks with Uldar. Then we cut away to see Arunvald and Fordola in one of the towers finding out that the towers are being powered by captured beastmen. But when Arunvald tries to free one of them, he trips the alarm and they're attacked by a lunar Ifrit. Then the game cuts back to Alpha Note getting the news about Arunvald getting severely injured. But he puts this news aside to join the Scions meeting with the Sultana, where they figure out the towers are making primals by manipulating the people within to summon their gods for the good of Garlemald. Then Nanama reveals that there are seven of these lunar primals roaming around, but none of them are nearly as strong as as Lunar Bahamut, so she asks the Scions to rest until the Alliance calls for them. So the Scions with Astinian go back to the Rising Stones, and this is where Cryo asks Astinian to join the Scions while she asks for Charlian's aid against the coming threat as an Eorzean emissary. Then she brings up that it's weird that Hydaelyn hasn't spoken to you since the end of the Dragon Song War, and she's hoping to find some answers about that in Charlian. Then she turns her attention back to Astinian to get his answer and after an uncharacteristic speech, he agrees to join the Scions. After resting a bit, most of the Scions go to Alamigo to take part in the most recent Alliance meeting. At this meeting, the Eorzean Alliance gets all of the Beastmen to agree to peace and join the fight against Garlemald, and you get the honor of renaming the Eorzean Alliance to the Grand Company of Eorzea. After the meeting, you, Alizé, Alphanode, and Graha go to Gridania to help Consiena in a meeting with a Charlian envoy which ends up being the twins father Forshenu. But unfortunately this meeting goes wrong with Forshenu stating that Charlian will not intervene between Eorzea and Garlemald. Following this, Alphanode and Alizé speak up against their father, but he blows them off and disowns them. After that, he restates Charlian's position and leaves. The Scions are called to help the Grand Company of Eorzea to fight the Telophoroi at the Cartanu Flats, but before your group leaves Gradania, you run into Arunvald, who gives Alphano the news that he may never walk again, and asks him to realize how many things he's achieved and to stop overthinking. Then you meet the rest of the Scions at the Cartanu Flats. After meeting up with everyone, the Scions rush into battle together until they split up to defeat the Lunar Primals. After the battle comes to a close, everyone stares at the moon, wondering what comes next. Then the Scions return to the Rising Stones and agree that Charlian is hiding something.
something and that that should be their next destination. After this, the game cuts away to show Xenos has a new weapon and that his eyes are solely focused on you. Then the game moves back to the Scions who figure out that the Aether around Eorzea has significantly weakened, proving that the towers are sucking the Aether out of the land. So they go back to the Rising Stones to inform their allies, but as you do, a mysterious figure shrouded by blinding light tells you that the fate of the source is in your hands. And with that, you are ready for Endwalker. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe with notifications turned on because I will be doing a separate Endwalker timeline video after the game releases. And I'll be doing timeline videos on Kingdom Hearts games because 2022 is the 20th anniversary of the series. And if you like anime and gaming video essays, stick around as well. But with all of that being said, it's been Skips and I'm out.